This video and all other videos on this channel are for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risk and you are prepared to lose it all. All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and we're nearly through the week, right? We are nearly through the week. We are at some pretty key levels on the charts. So I'm going to show you that if we're going to bounce from certain places, now would be a pretty good time to do it. And similarly for things like the yields and the dollar, if we're going to roll over, now would also be a pretty good time to do it. First of all, big shout out to Crypto Narba. Crypto Narba is back. So happy days. You can see he posted this for Bitcoin all the way back in early June. And since then, we may well be somewhere in this neighborhood, okay, on our way potentially to see this fear-driven fifth wave that he's been calling for come in. So that'd be pretty nice. He also blessed us with an update here where he shows the Bitcoin one month line chart, which of course only uses the closes, it omits all of the wicks. And I think it's pretty safe to say that is a beautiful look at the hard right edge, okay? So, so far so good. Let's see how it continues to play. In other news, the Bank of Canada has just cut by 50 basis points. It's gonna be pretty interesting when we get to this bond yield chart to see what happens going forward. Are we gonna to continue to tell that to the bond market? As it stands right now, the CME currently has us priced at 93% probability of seeing a 25 basis point cut, continuing, of course, the cutting cycle that the Fed has embarked on. The tell with this, as I often say, is once we're above 85% probability in one way or the other, okay, it is hardly ever wrong. It's nearly certain if we're above 85% according to the CME, then that is indeed what we will be seeing. So given that we're at 93% right now, I think it's pretty safe to say we will indeed be seeing at least a 25 basis point cut. And remember that the central banks do not often diverge for long periods of time, okay? Where the majority of them go, the rest tend to follow. So if the majority are continuing to cut and cut aggressively, okay, then it's only reasonable to expect continuation of cuts from the Fed. NASCO has made an excellent spot here with the Dixie. Like I was saying a minute ago, we're at some inflection points in the charts where if we're going to see things turn around, they ought to turn around right here. As you can see, dollar right into resistance. Is this the level at which we can see rejection and resumption of the downtrend? Or are we going to truly break out here and have to entertain a true deflationary spell? As I was saying, from the cycle perspective, we're expecting to see this cycle right translate. And then we're looking for left translation and failure to open up that downside scenario. If we do not get that, then what we're gonna have is another right translated cycle and then the thing is gonna to start to look like a true bottom is in, a true three year cycle low has confirmed and that whole idea of the risk here being deflation is very much coming into focus. So hopefully we can see rollover here, Big shout out to OV Crypto as well, who is showing us that the Dixie has given us a strong vertical bounce, okay, but is now at that daily RSI level that has reached overbought territory, as you can see right here. But the last couple of times we saw this, of course, coincided with major tops for the Dixie. So are we about to see this resumption of the downside? Are we going to get the Dixie to roll over? And if we do, okay, things could get very, very insane very, very quickly. Speaking of very insane very quickly, I pulled the third angle on the S&P 500 and extended it out. And if this thing's going to continue at this current rate, at this current trajectory, that would put us at 7,000 S&P by about March or April of next year. And I said yesterday when I posted this that I think that's too high, personally. I don't think we're going to make it to 7K, although Crypto Cobra's pitchfork suggests we might. I think we'd be lucky to see 6,400, and even at 6,200, I would consider that enough to start to look for the third and final angle breakdowns and bear markets and recessions. But if David Hunter is correct, then I said we might be looking at something approximating this. So if you think I'm too bullish, okay, <laughs> have a look at this. And the funny thing is, Dave replied somewhere in here that said, look, it's 7,500 the target, not 7,000. <laughs> so that's another 500 points, okay? That is somewhere up to this neighborhood here that David thinks is on the table. So, I mean, if he's even close to being correct, you know, <laughs> this is completely unprecedented. This is absolutely insane. Like I said, I think this is way, way, way too high, but who knows, right? We're going to find out. Even this right here to 7K would be insane. I still make the case that if we draw an approximate line here, like a roughly 6,400, I think that would be insane. And then we would still have third and final angle breakdowns, right? If I add the other ones so you can see, here's the first one here. And here is the second one here with the third one in here. So I still think that would look pretty blow off toppy if we topped here and then broke down. Okay, <laughs> I mean, that would still be, if I grab this pen here, a pretty severe parabola. But, you know... <laughs> 7,500? I don't know. We'll find out, right? I'm open to everything, okay? As always, I'm always open to everything. But if something like this is on the table, okay, then there is certainly space to see Bitcoin do Bitcoin things. And remember, Bitcoin moves, historically speaking, once it gets going, a lot, lot, lot faster than the stock market. 
Is this now going to be breakout retest resumption for the US two-year yield? Is this going to be breakout retest and off we go? Are we going to start to tell the bond market that it disagrees with the cut and it thinks it made a mistake? Or is this about to be a rollover, something like this? And are new lows on the way for the yields? Because if they are, that again would speak to everything operating within the realm of expectation. I saw a lot of people asking me questions about Druckenmiller going 20% of his portfolio short on the bond market. To be honest, I don't care. I disagree with it. And I think a lot of it is probably a hedge more than actually a position. He could certainly be wrong and I could certainly be wrong thinking he's wrong. Okay, as ever, I, I'm not going to make my trading or investment decisions just based on him. Okay, if he wants to be short, he can be short. That's not my idea of uh, a good trade right now. And as ever, time will tell, right? The market will prove one of us wrong. And as always, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about staying on the right side. I'm not really interested in longing or shorting bonds at this moment in time. I think the returns are going to continue to be in Bitcoin, gold, and the miners pertaining to each one of those. So that's going to be my focus. Fitting in with this theme as well of now would be a good time to bounce, okay? Look at where the S&P 500 wicked and recovered from so far, okay? So if this thing's going to hold, now would be the time to do it. Otherwise, something I did spot earlier, okay, was if we go back from this weekly cycle low, this is one right translated daily cycle, two right translated three right translated. Are we about to left on the fourth one, okay? Is that going to happen? I don't know, but if it is to break down from here, you'd be thinking, okay, it's probably got a much more significant correction. Similarly, now would be the time to bounce if it is going to bounce at all. Long and strong above the third angles, same deal with the NASDAQ, right? Kind of just about hanging on to its support and the Dow Jones again wicked it. You know, is this the start of a correction and a breakdown or is this thing going to bounce from here? We'll get an answer in the next day or two, which is cool. I'd like to see the VIX continue to be pushed down as well. So we'll see if that can happen. And the Russell 2K is still chopping around, right? Okay, I think it's getting ready. I think, but as of yet, no real sign of a push towards 2700. By the way, since we mentioned David Hunter earlier, I believe his target is 3300. It might even be slightly higher than that. So... <laughs> I think he's too bullish, but who knows, right? Who knows? Time will tell. Anything above 2,700 for me will be gravy. And for gold, okay, we've been saying the same thing over and over. Right translation, one. Second, right translation. Third, right translation. If cycles are going to do normal things, then perhaps a left translation is on the table for the fourth daily cycle. If that's the case, okay, that should be the top. So if this thing starts to break down from here, then I think shorts into that weekly cycle low make the most sense. If, however, what we see from here is an invalidation for this and a continuation to a new high after the halfway point, say by Monday or Tuesday of next week, then we can say, okay, it's not gonna left translate. We're gonna see a right translation here and then the left translation would be expected in daily cycle five. So no real changes to that. Somebody was asking me to cover silver. Um, we are positioned via some silver miners in the member section. So yeah, happy days, right? It seems to be wanting to blast off. Doesn't look like it's gonna get that flush into the weekly cycle low from here. But ultimately, as I said with gold, it's probably gonna be the same thing just from slightly higher up, right? That weekly cycle will show up. It's, this is a timing window designed to predict time, not price. But you can see we're getting pretty close to that now. I mean, if I pull a measurement from here, any time between the next sort of 30 days and as much as 90 days, we should be in the window for a very, very high probability buy setup out of a weekly cycle low for both silver and for gold and, of course, for the miners as well. Ultimately, it doesn't change much to my long term opinion, right? My long term opinion is that we are indeed going to do something akin to this. And you can see here that weekly cycle low would be due sometime around November, December, whatever, January, if it overextends. Clearly, the path is never going to track one for one for the fractal but overall i don't think this is going to be too far from reality comfortable in the positions i've got long and strong in the positions i've got long and strong from a spot market positions but i definitely want to be keeping an eye out for some kind of significant weekly cycle low to really load the boat and then we'll have a full six months of weekly cycle ahead and i'll be expecting something akin to this into that next weekly cycle low time frame. And of course, Bitcoin, similar deal, right? If we are gonna bounce and take some liquidity from higher up prior to that cycle low that coincides with the elections, now would be the time to do it. This would be somewhere around day 45, okay? So we've got a half cycle and then a quarter cycle ready for that final quarter. Let's see if we can get it. I am also more than open to seeing something like this come out of here into that November 5th time frame, And then again, we'll get a long one from here or here, wherever the low forms. Ultimately, it doesn't change anything. I see there's definitely some new people coming into this space. There's definitely some new inexperienced and sort of retail traders that are starting to show up here. I can see it in my comments. I can see them saying things like every time you post it dumps, right? And I mean, <laughs> it's just complete nonsense, right? Also, I'm a swing trader. I'm not a day trader. I don't care what happens. You know, like I keep saying over and over again, we'll aim at that cycle low and nothing changes. Long and strong until we get there and then double long and double strong for camel. 
So be aware of that. There's a whole heap of confusion and, and uh, inexperience out there, but that's probably a sign that we are getting ready to break out and for those guys to be buying the top before this thing comes tumbling down. So just as a quick recap, okay, stocks, now would be a good time to bounce if they're going to do it. Gold, if it's going to left translate, now would be the time to do it. If not, we'll keep pushing the minor positions we've got in the member section. Bitcoin, if it has got one final leg up, okay, to roughly approximate my yellow squiggle, then again, now would be the time to do it. If not, probably expect something more like this, cycle low and go. Either way, it doesn't change anything to the way I'm going to be handling it. Still going to be long in out of that cycle low. The crypto related equities, they look pretty good, right? They're showing relative strength. I think they know something. I think the institutional traders that are much more capable of trade in the, the stocks than they are the crypto asset just because of the regulatory hurdles. I think they know something is about to arrive and therefore they're getting some higher beta exposure via these types of crypto stocks. And in the member section, again, we're going to continue to conquer those crypto stocks because I believe that's where the most return is over the next few months. If the dollar is going to roll over, okay, now would be the time to do it. And the same deal with the yields. If the yields are going to roll over, now would also be the time to do it. So as ever, a wild time to be alive. We'll keep taking it one day at a time. We'll keep staying on the right side of the trade. And until next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye. He's the man to see Rocking the markets with his contrarian spree Trades like a pro, no fear, no shame Sticking to his guns in his money game He's a badass, oh yes indeed Gamble finance, got the markets key Taking a stormies on a 